Open BMP has released yet another version of their celebrated mini CPM model. In this video, we are going to install this 8 billion parameter version of this mini CPM4 model and we are going to test it out on various benchmarks. Mini CPM4 is a highly efficient LLM designed explicitly for end side devices. By end side device, they mean client side hardware like smartphone, tablet, laptop or any IoT device where AI models run locally rather than on remote cloud servers. There are a lot of efficiencies and systematic innovations which they have done. They have segregated these innovations in four key dimensions. Model architecture, training data, training algorithm and inference system. This model achieves ultimate efficiency improvements while maintaining optimal performance at the same scale and can achieve over five times generation acceleration on typical end side chips. The series include multiple variants ranging from the flagship 8 billion which we are going to install and then it goes down to 0.5 billion parameter version as you can see on their hugging face model card and there are a lot of other variants too and i will be doing multiple videos on other variants because some of them look pretty interesting anyway but i just want to focus on this 8 billion parameter model for this video i'm going to use this ubuntu system and I have one GPU card NVIDIA RTX A6000 with 48GB of VRAM. If you are also looking to rent a GPU on very very affordable price, you can find the link to Mast Compute's website in video's description with a discount coupon code of 50% for a range of GPUs. So at the start, I am just going to go with the creation of this Gonda environment. Okay, next up, we need to git clone the repo of a very interesting uh, GitHub repo, cpm.cu from OpenBMB. As you can see that I'm recursively downloading it. This is the repo which I'm cloning. Now, this repo is quite interesting. If you look at it, it's primarily a very lightweight, high-performing CUDA implementation for LLMs. And OpenBMB recommends the cpm.cu to install and do the inference of their large language models i have been covering these mini cpm models for a long time now as you can see on the channel and this is the first time i am going to use this cpm.cu library because to be honest i haven't really seen it before and i think they just released it um, last week or two to three days ago and the good thing is that it is apache 2 license so should be fun to see how exactly this performs anyway so you can see that our repo is now cloned another good thing is that they have provided a setup script in order to get this thing installed so for that all you need to do is to run this command from the root of the repo this is going to take a bit of a time and while that happens, let me introduce you to the sponsors of the video who are Camel AI. Camel is an open source community focused on building multi-agent infrastructures for finding the scaling laws with applications in data generation, task automation, and world simulation. And this setup is taking long time. So meanwhile, that happens. Let's talk a bit more about this 8 billion model and its architecture. So as I was saying earlier, they have done a bit of a different stuff this time. So what sets this mini CPM4 apart from not only other models in its own family, the previous one, but also from others is its comprehensive optimization approach focused on edge deployment. The model uses uh, in inf LLM version 2 trainable sparse attention architecture where each token only needs to compute relevance with less than 5% of tokens in 128k long text processing which dramatically reduces computational overhead. It also features bit CPM extreme ternary quantization that compresses model parameters into ternary values, but that's a separate model. I will cover it in another video, but that has achieved 90% reduction in bit width, which is quite impressive. And that uses advanced training techniques like uh, floating point eight, low precision computing and multi-token prediction strategies. 
this particular model also uses specialized inference frameworks as i mentioned earlier the cpm.cu for CUDA acceleration and ARC infer for cross-platform deployment, making it practical for mobile devices and edge computing scenarios where tra traditional models would be too resource intensive. Anyway, once it gets installed, we will check out its VRAM consumption to see what exactly it looks like. And I will just wait for this to finish. Okay, it finished. That's good. Now the good thing is that they also have shared an inference script. So let me quickly open it in the VS Code editor. So this is a script which they have provisioned. All this script is doing, it is importing the libraries which it has just in installed, the torch, transformers and stuff. Then some of the hyperparameters in order to control the input output. And this is a parameter which we can pass to that script which I will show you shortly there are a lot of arguments but don't worry about these and this is where it is handling those parameters which have been passed then it is getting the model and if it is not available it is downloading it it is also implementing some sort of yarn just to patch the model and then some of the long rope or long scaling some more parameters this is where it is massaging the input if you haven't passed any just a default one and this is where it is getting the file which i'm going to show you shortly with the prompt it is generating the summary some of the stats and then it is just going to finish the output here so pretty long thing which is quite surprising i think it's just a text model for god's sake no need to make it that complicated but anyway this is for edge so maybe i think this is a lot of optimization which they are trying to do um, in my humble opinion, this could be simplified. Things have come a long way. Anyway, so this is the prompt I'm asking it that write a detailed explanation of photosynthesis, how photosynthesis works, then create a short poem, finally solve the math problem, and then what is average speed, that sort of thing. So I have just put it in one prompt.txt file, and that is what I'm going to run. Let's go back and from here, I'm just going to clear the screen and I'm going to run this script. So what this script is going to do, it is going to download the model if it is not present already and then it is going to use that prompt file. So let's run it. And as soon as I have run it, it is downloading the model. Let's wait for it. There you go. So it is downloading that model. Seems pretty interesting. Let's wait. And it was fairly quick and not only it has loaded the model as you can see it has given us a tensor count and then if you look here it has generated the text where it has told us how photosynthesis work and that's it it didn't give me i think it did the answer but it just curtailed it here because that is what uh, max output token was but that is fine i think it was fairly quick anyway and this is the 8 billion model let me try out another one. I'm just going to give another prompt and we will see how it goes. We will also check VRAM consumption. Okay, so I'm just going to give it this math problem where I'm asking it that a baker makes 144 cookies and puts them in boxes of 12. If he sells seven boxes, how many cookies are left? Let's go back. I will also run this. And as it loads the model, I'm just going to run this to check the VRAM consumption. Oh wow, so 40, over 44 gig of VRAM for end device for 8 billion model. I think that's too high. They should work on this, uh, reducing this, especially for 8 billion. I don't expect it to go over 24 gig of VRAM at max. Okay, so anyway, but let's look at the response and answer just to check if what model has done here so the correct answer is 60 which i think it has done well okay so the answer is correct okay let's check out a logical reasoning one so i'm asking it if all cats are mammals and fluffy is is a cat what can we conclude about fluffy i don't think so it's a reasoning model but let's check it out i'll let it run so that you can also see there you go. It's fairly quick, by the way. 
So it is talking about that Fluffy is a mammal, then it is giving its reasoning, which is concise, and it has come up with two premises, and also doing some logical deduction. And the transitive property, I think it's a pretty decent uh, answer, I would say. Okay, let's do maybe a coding one. I'm just going to go with a coding question here. For the coding one, I'm just asking it to read, write me a Python code. Let's run this. Let's wait for it. The simple reverse string one. Yep, fairly good. Next up, let's do a multilingual text. I'm asking it to translate I love you in various languages from across the world. Let's see if it can do that. The speed of the model is quite good. That is what we require from our edge device models. But let's have a look. So, and I would also need your advice. So look, I think it has done quite well in few languages. But other than that, I think Persian doesn't look good to me. Yep, some of them are good. Some of them, it's a mixed result, I would say. Okay, that is cool. Let's do one final test i'm asking it which letter appears most in the world word volleyball i think step by step let's see if it can deduct that so of course that's a letter l there you go there you go it has done it well l but you see the count is just two so you can also make up your mind what do you think about this answer but so remember, you cannot blindly trust what LLM is telling you. The answer could appear to be right, but if you go in the depth, then you can clearly see the answer is actually wrong. Anyway, so that's it. Let me know what do you think about mini CPM. Um, they always have done well. I mean, I would say a decent job, if not anything earth shattering. So, I mean, if we just keep the fluff out, so decent job for an edge model. But I think they could improve in terms of VRAM setting. Plus, they I think they have just added some extra uh, complexity here. Yes, speed is definitely fast than other CUDA inference. No doubt about that. That is what we require from our edge devices. But at the same time, memory footprint should be low if we are putting it on the end or edge devices. Anyway, let me know what your thoughts. Please like the video and share it and if you haven't already subscribed, please do so. Thank you very much.